Hey, everybody, and welcome to another Playful Humans podcast. I'm your host, Mike Montague, and my guest this week is a radio personality, Jesse Tack. He's also a friend of mine, and we're going to talk with him about what it's like to play for a living and twins. Look forward to that. <laughs> you can go to B105.com to listen to his shows every weekday afternoon, or you can follow him on Instagram, Jesse Tack 105 a good follow as always. And you can join the club at playfulhumans.com if you're looking to rediscover the power of play in your life and uh, break out of the, the boredom and uh, shenanigans of the pandemic and get out there and have some fun. Go to playfulhumans.com. Here we go. Jesse, great to catch up with you on the podcast. We've known each other for about 15 years, but it's always uh, it's always fun to catch up and and see you on camera because you're usually you're you're hidden in the radio station with no cameras on. Yeah, it, it, it's good to see you too. Actually, a surprise! I'm actually my identical twin, Joey Tack. Surprise! <laughs> but we could do. You mentioned twins. We could do a whole podcast about just being an identical twin. Honestly. Uh, I was going to ask you some questions about that because both of you are very playful and uh, you have a lot of fun with that, which I, I think is interesting. But we have to start with the joke of the week because we right. start with the joke of the week here. It's brought to you by Lower Expectations. It's the secret to happiness. Try Lower Expectations today. Uh, it's a good time to lower them right now for the joke of the week. <laughs> oh, I thought that was it. I no. was like, that's pretty good. <laughs> My 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 wife screamed in pain during labor, Jesse, and so I asked, I, "I'm sorry, what's wrong?" And she said, "These contractions are going to kill me." And I said, "I am sorry, honey. What is wrong?" I just, you know, I don't even have any kids. That's as good as I can do today. Yeah, it's it's um, <laughs> good. It's good. Lower lower those expectations, right? There you go. So I know you, we were talking about the identical twins. You guys have had fun with that. I, I mean, I don't know how much you had your your whole life, but I know a couple of, of your funny stories is um, posing as each other on on social media or websites, or uh, you're both radio hosts too, which is interesting. So you get to have some fun with that. What was your what's your favorite twin moment with your brother? Oh my gosh! You know. This is a question we get a lot, like, oh, did you switch spots in school? And we, yeah. no, we didn't because we, first of all, we were terrified we were going to get in trouble. Um, I, I don't know if we were just constantly getting in trouble in school and we were just gun shy to do something like that. But there were enough people that could tell a difference between us that they'd be like, oh, it's Joey instead of Jesse, you know, and I don't think our teachers would find that humorous. So we didn't do that, but we have gotten confused for each other um, on accident a ton. And it normally happens when I'm at his workplace or he's at mine uh, and somebody comes up to me, like his boss will come up to me and just start talking about like, hey, that was a really great thing you did yesterday on that thing. And I have to look at this person. I have a typical response. It's like, I'm not who you think I am. <laughs> oh man you're jesse you know that's happened a lot my brother's married and my sister-in-law we've had a couple of times it's it's really funny she's super cool about it but there's been there was one time i was sitting on the couch at their house visiting she came up behind me just just starts like petting my head and i'm like <laughs> and she's like oh my god that's happened a couple times. And you gotta laugh. I find it funny. It's, it's not uncomfortable yeah. because I know I'm, you know, I'm no one's going on, but like I, I always have to like empathize with people because they're really embarrassed when these things happen. Uh, so I can see definitely at work because you guys work in different cities and parts of the country. So it's not like you're there every day. If if you saw somebody that walked walking by that looks like your coworker, that's you're right. not even going to think that's exactly what it is because all everybody's yeah. like we could tell the difference between you two and it's like that's not the point it's we look similar enough if they pass by and you don't know he's here you're going to briefly think it's me like we look oh, enough for sure. alike for that but uh no we've done other things like um you know we both work in radio and 
a couple of years ago, Joey posted a picture of me meeting Taylor Swift from years before and said, he posted it for a throwback Thursday and said, oh, that one time I met Taylor Swift is great. You know, (laughs) dumb stuff like that, you know, and we just laugh because a lot of people don't notice. Um, But I I thought it was was really funny in your your story that I know a lot of uh, females have body issues, but I don't think they realize the guys do too. And you and your brother lost a bunch of weight, but I thought it was amazing. You told me one time, like, well, you don't want to be known as the fat twin. So there's a lot of pressure to like (laughs) keep yourself fit here as an identical twin, right? That's what's, (laughs) what's hilarious about this is I don't remember saying that. And I would never say that this, these days. So to hear that, I'm like, God, I hate myself for saying that. Um, But you and I have known each other since 2003 so you know that's 18 years you know Uh, we were both different people back then but you don't i mean there was maybe i mean remembered it maybe i I made up that line i was like oh yeah maybe maybe he said it um but no we were both big like um you know i weighed 75 pounds more than i do now at one point um weight size 40 waist i mean i i was big um for for me and I lost all that weight. And then he did too. And, and it's just so funny. Yeah. We just kind of follow each other's patterns, um, you know, after a while, but I don't know, being a twin will never get old. Um, it's, it's, it's just constantly a topic of conversation. I love it. That's yeah, fun. Well, I appreciate you sharing that with us. Now there's a couple of other things in your career, uh, that I think people should know. So you've won some country music awards, which I think is incredible and maybe that's a little bit different than what happens in pop radio and stuff but that's really cool that you have been to and won country music awards what was that like the first time and how many are you at now you're at least two right we um well i've i've been uh i won a cma award for um personality of the year so the cma country music association you know and they do the big tv show with you know Keith Urban and Luke Bryan and these, you get the trophies. Well, there's a broadcast award category that they award at the same show, you know, not on TV. Mm -hmm. Uh, Nonetheless, cool. We got to go up on stage. And my co-host and I, a couple of years ago, uh, we, we were nominated on our first time submitting. You have to submit a, uh, a demo, uh, your audio kind of like from the year, you have to put together a presentation of like your community service and just what you are and, what you do for country music they nominated us which was shocking and then out of six shows we won which was my head buzzed for hours on end if if there's ever been a feeling of being like on cloud nine and just floating above like out of body experience that was it um it's just when you think of a cma award it's like how do i have a cma award it's very humbling. Um, my trophy lives in the trophy case at work. Uh, it has my name engraved on it in glass, um, personality of the year. And, um, and, it, and it was great. That was so exciting. We got to go on stage. We got to sit in the first 20 rows of the show that night wow. in, in Nashville. Um, and it very humbling. Um, yeah, I, probably a highlight. That's one of the probably top five highlights of my career for sure. But I was also going to ask you, I I know this one too, which I I think is interesting. And I've heard a little bit of the story, but you also made a hit country record. So I know that you didn't record it, but you did a a mashup that went viral and became popular, more popular than the actual original of the song, right? Pretty much. Unofficially. um, Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so the story is uh, in 2009, Carrie Underwood, um, You know, she had won American Idol in 2005. Now, several years later, she was already a major country superstar. And she recorded a song called I Told You So, which was a Randy Travis song from the 80s. Randy Travis, major country star. Carrie did a cover of it. And my boss at the time came to me and said, can you take the Carrie version and mash it up with the Randy Travis version and make a duet? And I sat in this very studio where I'm at here upstairs at my house for four or five hours that night and did every audio piece of magic I could. And I created a mashup and it 
you know, sounded pretty good, I thought, but you never know. You kind of lose touch after a while. And I played it the next day for my boss or whoever, and they were just like, oh my gosh, like that hmm. actually sounds like a duet that's better. We think that's better than the version that we have. We are just going to play that version in Cincinnati. So we did. That was our version of that song, but word got around to other radio stations around the country. I don't know how, but they did. And then I start getting emails from program directors in all different states saying, can you send me your version of it? Because it wasn't available and they wanted to play. So, I mean, in my hometown in Iowa, in Kansas City, I think, and mm -hmm. places I'll never know, we're playing my duet version of that song. Then uh, I start, I made the front page of the Cincinnati Inquirer, which is a pretty big deal. Uh, I had it, by the way, I bought <laughs> that front page, had it like framed, it hangs on my wall. I'm on the very yeah. bottom, I don't care. I'm on the front page with my picture. <laughs> and, then in, and then MTV News calls and they want to do like a print story. And it just kind of went from there. So that was, it could have ended there. And then maybe a couple of weeks later, I hear, I see a headline that Randy Travis is going to sing a duet with Carrie Underwood on American Idol of that song. You might think that possibly this traction had inspired that. I don't know. I don't have any confirmation of it. But then, honestly, the real highlight is when I found out that they were going back into the studio. Randy Travis was going to re-record some of his vocals to create a duet version of that song. That was amazing. And that that was 2009 i think that happened and they did it and it's all unofficial i don't they might have yeah, had this plan right, yeah um but i'll always have my newspaper clipping uh, <laughs> you made the front page i mean i think those are, are really cool moments and both of those for me stem from play i think you have a really uh playful attitude towards your work obviously that's as a, a radio host that's what you're doing but i mean you're not doing serious like talk radio political in, in topics you're doing country radio where you're messing around with fans interviewing celebrities trying to have as much fun as possible right you know yourself but also for your audience which i think is what has made you successful at the job but also created these cool moments that that jump out because you really love playing with music and and uh themes and other mashups and in the business we know things like sweepers and and other terms that are like stuff you have to make to have a radio show or a podcast is intro music and outro music and different yeah. theme songs like you really enjoy messing with that you'll spend hours yeah. just playing for fun right not even getting paid for fun um the what got me and my brother into radio and i always have to use joey joey's my twin um we have to use this together because we've done everything. We got into radio on the same day. We got hired the same day. Very we young, right? 16. Yeah, we were like juniors in high school, maybe. Uh, and then so we crazy. got, um, but, but years before that, we would sit in our basement in our room and pretend to be on the radio. And we'd have jingles and songs and, and create promos, you know, that pretend to play on the radio. So we learned audio editing. So we have this real creative uh streak in us to try to like learn how to do that and you combine that with our I, I we pride ourselves i do especially especially we both do on being innovative and doing things we were both inspired by people on the radio that were larger than life and that created that magic of radio which is just like oh my gosh how did they do that or oh wow that's so funny you're so cool the way that they uh, they, that guy messed with that caller, but he wasn't picking on him. He was just joking with them. And then he played their song and it, it all wraps up nice. So that's what got us into radio was to do that, but mostly to make people feel something. And when you create those little, that we call them imaging pieces, promos and the sweepers, it's making somebody feel something, whether it's laughing or getting them excited for a concert and putting that together and assembling that is a challenge and when you feel it yourself creating it it's just like oh my gosh i wonder how other people are going to react to this that is what drives me in my radio show 
and um, just creating new things, trying different things. Is it really? Do you have any favorite creations of yours or, or celebrity moments of, of fun and, and playfulness in your career? You've also gotten some yeah. trips out of uh, the deal too, which is, is pretty amazing, but yeah, uh, we've um, covered a couple of the highlights already. Are there any others that jump out as really fun? Um, well, like creations, like, um, you know, uh, well, we'll talk about the trips here in a minute, but in radio at the top of the hour, you have your legal ID and it's like on our station, it's, you know, WUBE Cincinnati. You have to say your station's call letters at the top of hour within a few minutes. It is the law. Um, mm -hmm. I would, and you may remember this from Kansas City when we worked together, I would take this theater of mind concept, you know, you know, for our, let's say I had a countdown, right? At eight o'clock at night, you know, and it'd be from the depths of the Hubbard Broadcasting Complex, deep within the vault of the blah, blah, blah of WUBE Cincinnati. And then it goes on for another 10 seconds or so. It's a glorified legal ID that I buried into the middle of a piece of theater, essentially, with all the dramatic music, all of the, oh my God, what's about to happen calls in there. <laughs> and and that's, that's what I love. Um, so from that creative angle, that's, that's what we do. But in terms of play, my goodness, uh, my co-host and I, a couple of years ago, in uh, 17 or 18, 2018, we decided for the first day of summer to go on a road trip. First day of summer is the longest day of the year. Or no, that's, is that right? The yeah, equal? Yeah. Okay. Longest day of the year. It's in June. You have the most sunlight is what that means. So the sun is up the longest period of time. So the concept was how far can we get into a car and drive west and make the sun last? That was the concept. Yeah. We made it to the Rocky Mountains, Denver, wow. Colorado, to see the sunset. We left Cincinnati. Now, don't tell anybody, we might have left a few hours before the sun came up. <laughs> you know, it's magic. We might not have gone on Facebook Live for a couple hours. I think people knew this. You, if you Google it, you can't make it there. Nonetheless, <laughs> it was a 17 and a half hour drive. And we made it with few stops. And we were on Facebook Live almost the entire time. And you and I have been on camera now for, let's say, 10, 15 minutes. Imagine being on camera with few breaks for... 10 12 13 hours it's exhausting and we made it there and just we pulled into this park in denver with 20 minutes to spare to see the sunset <laughs> behind the rockies it was surreal we had i think at that point maybe five six seven hundred viewers on facebook live following us people have been watching us all day for some reason and <laughs> then the next year we did the same thing and drove to mount rushmore and that's an even further cool. trip. Um, and we made it there by sunset. So we've done that. We went to Iceland um, on a trip. It was actually an endorsement. We were influencers for uh, Wow Airlines, uh, which was an airline that has <laughs> direct flights from Cincy to Iceland. And uh, if you've never been there, wow, I suggest you go. It is way more affordable than you think. And you can drive your own car. So... <laughs> Well, somebody's car. It's not yours, yeah. but it you right. You're on the right side of the road. So um, that's funny. I mean, those are amazing. You also have a couple of my favorites that I've seen. Is uh, you had one of those blow up T Rex Halloween costumes, and you guys had a lot of fun with that going in to public places or mowing the lawn or or doing whatever uh, you had to do in that one. But yeah. uh, you also got a pan interesting pandemic haircut uh, live. Oh, yeah. On the air yeah but this is one of those things it's like you know during covid and the pandemic it is like this is very serious it was it's very it is serious but it also was very serious back in april may march last year and it's like how can i be creative and have fun while not make fun and poke i'm not poking fun at this but i how can i poke fun at myself we all needed a haircut and you legally couldn't get one so I'm like, I mean, not all of us needed a haircut, but yeah, go ahead. <laughs> right, right. You <laughs> out. Um, but I did not. And my hair was getting long. And I was like, how could I do a socially distanced haircut and just make it the most ridiculous thing ever? 
So essentially, I set up a six-foot barrier all around me outside of the radio station with caution tape. I had a professional hairstylist come, set up all her tools next to me. I had a mirror, and I was cutting my own hair per her directions. And if you've never used real scissors, like from a haircut place, a salon, they are incredibly sharp. Not playing like, around, yeah. Like, you can hurt yourself. I poked myself a couple times. And if you've never cut your hair, well, I, if you've never done it in a mirror, it's backwards. It's all backwards, right, yeah. And it is yeah. really hard to do. And I did a terrible job, but that's why I gave her a pair of clippers duct taped <laughs> to a, 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 what was it, a broomstick. And she was six feet away with clippers cutting my hair. And then she used a, a leaf blower to blow dry <laughs> to clip things out. And it, awesome. it was all on Facebook Live. Visually, it's one of the more ridiculous things you've ever seen. And lots of people watched. And I knew my hair was going to be fine. I mean, it's not, I mean, I gave her instructions. Don't back. Go, yeah. don't go to, I can wear a hat and don't go too crazy with it, I told her. But I was like, nonetheless, one thing that I've had to learn about my career, you know me, I'm very introverted. And my tendency is to be like, ah, I don't want to do that. That would make me look stupid, right? I've had to learn to poke fun at myself. And what I've learned from that is people really love that because a lot of people are afraid to do that themselves. But I'm not harming myself in any way. I'm just having fun and poking fun. You know, I've stripped down to nothing but boxers for a charity before. Like, it's stuff like that. And once you do it, you're like, oh, you're not, people aren't making fun of you. They're, they think you're, it's hilarious, you know? So, yeah. I mean, that's what I think about, I think it's so great the way you approach things playfully and have fun. And, and what we would do in, in radio is you're really doing the things other people don't normally get to do at their job. You get to play and have fun and, right. and be ridiculous and, and come up with interesting ways to, to make people laugh or, or have fun. But I had one more surprise question for you and sure. then, uh, and then we'll kind of wrap up and end and, and with a game. But uh, my surprise question for you is uh, I know you really enjoy being cheap and, and saving money. It, it was there a favorite time where um, you got to, play with your uh coupon savings or uh do you have a legendary purchase where you uh where you pulled something off that you were proud of oh well i mean it's not a great story but <laughs> do you remember the coupon clipping craze maybe from 10 years ago on tlc they had tv shows about people right, yeah. hundreds of dollars of things for free and they'd keep like a stockpile and they'd have like 10 you know 100 uh things of flossers and things like that right I kind of got into that for a little bit. Um, I, I've never told this story publicly because uh, I didn't have the balls to tell it back then, but I will now. <laughs> I had a baseball card binder with clipped coupons. I would clip from the paper, organized coupons. I'd go into the grocery store with a list. One lady, one point, a lady, an older lady at the grocery store one time, she's like, I don't think I've ever seen a guy with a coupon binder before. And I'm like... God, I hope nobody ever finds out about this. <laughs> but um, I had, um, let's just say I ended up with a lot of coupons for a particular, it was like a protein bar, right? And they were oh, $3 yeah. off coupons. And a friend had a bunch of coupons or whatever. And I ended up with a disgusting amount of protein bars, <laughs> maybe like a hundred protein bars that I paid no money. I, I paid zero or I had to pay the tax on it. That's yeah. it. So it was a $3 off coupon and the protein bars were each $3. Or it was like a box for three. I don't even know. So I had a kitchen table full of protein bars that it was like, oh, look at that haul, right? And it was all just from couponing, right? Well, stores don't let you do that now. They're like, wow, you're going to clean us out. Um, right. How many do you have left? But saving money, like, it's more just like, um, I'm really good at it when it comes to, like, booking travel. Um, you know, I'll find the best deal. Or I won't pay 
40 bucks to park in a parking garage. I'll use spothero.com or whoever, right? <laughs> and I'll find the lot that's three blocks away, walk, and for two days, it's 12 bucks. You know? So my question for you, is this more like, it, it seems playful for you. You enjoyed the game of it. This is something you like. Where I've seen other people that stress out about it, or if you really need to save money, I think that's kind of a different story. But you enjoy it. And also in radio, there's a lot of like free stuff going around. Like you mentioned sponsorships and other things that happen where you get a lot of free stuff, t-shirts, uh, the mug you're drinking out of uh, right now. You could, oh, uh, yes. All... <laughs> All free. So it kind of leans into that a little bit, but, but would you say it's, it's a healthy, playful fun, or do you think uh, it, it yes. adds stress to you on that? Yeah, no, no, fun. no stress. Um, I mean, I don't coupon anymore like that. Uh, I don't clip coupons. I use uh, Kroger. We have Kroger's here, Kroger digital coupons. I use Ibotta. Um, trust me, if there's a way for me to make money on something I'm already spending money on, I know about it. It's a, <laughs> it's a, it's like a game for me. Good. It's like, how efficient can I be with my money? That's what it is. It's not that I'm cheap. I Have you seen the picture on my social media page? It's on my Instagram at jessetag105. I bought a lawn striper, which puts, if you've been to a golf course or a major league baseball field, they put the stripes in the lawn, right? Yeah. How do you do it? It's a roller that's weighted down and it pushes the blades of grass over I spent 115 bucks on that thing. So I'll spend money. And to me, do you know how much joy that has given me in the last week? That's, that's like playing for me. Cause it's like, Oh, this is exciting. This is like a toy. So, uh, no, I have, I spent, you know, traveling, yeah, It's fun, but I'm also good at saving money. And yeah, I think I've gotten better in my uh frugal ways over the years but yeah you knew me at a real cheap phase man well we were both making no money early in yeah. our radio career so we needed to be cheap and and split a pizza that's a good point <laughs> every sunday night uh just just to save the dollars at that point in our, our career is, for sure that is true uh, yeah. all right you want to play a game sure I will spin our wheel of games. There are 10 possible games it could land on. And you got choose your own, choose your own game. So uh, I picked one out for you just in case this uh, happened magically. Uh, and then I'll let you uh, pick a game to, to play with us out of your favorite radio games. But I know you're also a movie buff fan. So I have blockbuster movie uh, family feud cards here. Oh, I thought those were gift cards to use at the one remaining blockbuster. Blockbuster in America. I watched that on Netflix. Oregon. I know. It was good. So give me the title of an iconic movie song that was also a successful pop song. Oh, uh, Danger Zone. Oh, uh, no, but close. Kenny Loggins does make the list. Oh, oh, um, oh, um, I'm all right. <laughs> Wait, Jesse, a it's a dance craze. It's a movie. No. Oh, wait, wait. Repeat the question. I, I screwed this up. Uh, give me the title of an iconic movie song that is also a successful pop song. We have six six on the list. Oh, oh. One of My them by Kenny. My Heart Will Go On? <laughs> My Heart Will Go On is number two. Congratulations. Okay. Okay. Number one was Live and Let Die. I think that's, uh, oh. that's kind of surprising to me. Okay. And we have okay. Shallow, Staying Alive, Eye of the Tiger, and Footloose. Okay. okay. All right. Well, I was on something with Kenny. Hey, listen, Kenny Loggins, I'm all right. Uh, uh, well, Caddyshack. Caddyshack. Yeah. And the Danger Zone, Top Gun. So, listen, I feel yeah, good. Yeah, you're, you're in the ballpark for sure. Yeah. We, we could just have a card that says name five Kenny Loggins songs. I know. Uh, all right. I'll give you one more. These uh, are a little bit tougher. I don't know how we're going to do here. But did you watch Guardians of the Galaxy? Yeah. Uh, can you name one song from the Guardians of the Galaxy soundtrack? Uga Chaka, Uga Chaka, Hooked on a Feeling. Hooked on a Feeling is the number yeah. one answer. Congratulations, yes! you nailed it. Yes. Thank All God. Right. I was like, God, I hope he doesn't ask me about anything else about that movie because I <laughs> love it. I just don't remember. Um, so I, I have a I game. I know you like movie songs. Can I play my game? Yeah. If you, all right. This is the yes or no game. This is a game we play on the radio, and it is one of my favorites. It is so simple. It is seven yes or no questions that I'm going to ask you. Let me get my timer ready. 
and there's a couple rules. Um, yes. You oh, have God. to answer all seven questions without saying yes or no. You can't pause for more than three seconds. You can't repeat an answer and your answer has to make sense. So uh, let me get my timer because you know, we're official. Let's do it. I feel like I'm good at this. I've played some some questioning games in our, our sales training that we do. I think I'm ready for this one. This one's, uh, this no one's fun. This one's fun. Uh, it's the yes or no game. All right, let me get my paper ready. And we start now. Is your name Mike? Montague. Are you having a bad day? I just started. Do you have any pets? Tex and Sammy. Do you like dogs? Which type of dogs? What about cats? I love cats. Are you a fan of sports? Which sports? Do you like curling? I used to like curling my hair. Oh, that was real close. Oh, man. You, okay. You so it. if we were on the radio, I'd probably give it to you because you started answering that last question. But you pulled an approach that only the most seasoned people of that contest know, which is start answering the question, but don't, you didn't know the answers. <laughs> you were working through it. And yeah. I have to like let you have it. But I was also trying not to just cheat because there is a cheat to this game we played in, in sales training where if you just ask a question back, it almost makes sense. So like when you're like, do you like sports? And I say, which sports? And you say, you know, do you like this? Then you just say what day or this day. And oh my if God, don't ever. Question, if you have a technique, you can do it pretty we, this, this, do, we may have to cut this part out of the podcast. That would ruin my game forever because I just, <laughs> like that absolutely would work. Oh man. Yeah, no, what people do is they'll pre-write answers down for this game when we play it. And I'll be like, is your oh, name? Because you can say maybe or other things like I don't think so uh, would all be appropriate answers. But sometimes, yeah, but sometimes like they'll do that and it's just like doesn't. That's why one of the rules is it has it to It doesn't make sense. sense. Yeah. You know, is your name Mike? Uh, I like chocolate. Okay. <laughs> all right. that good that's uh, not helpful but but no you won congratulations you've won a gift card to blockbuster and uh it's uh redeemable in uh bend oregon all right awesome well um i was going to uh offer you yeah for playing uh um a uh a night's show on e105 how about that uh oh yeah. yes yes <laughs> i also have a mug I actually, I am going to send you a mug because I have several of these and, you know, we all love radio swag. So, uh, I'll so you were, uh, you were, we were on E105 together in Kansas city, but now you're on B105. So we don't want to confuse people as we wrap up the show here. So B105.com, the letter B and 105.com. And you can check out Jesse's show. It streams live all around the world every weekday afternoon. And if you go to Jesse tech 105 on Insta, Always a good follow there. Any final thoughts, Jesse, as we wrap up? Just, uh, you know, um, try different things. You know, I'm not, I, I, I heard a podcast you did with another, um, with Joel Bryant. And, you know, he said he went through this phase or is in this phase where he just says yes to everything. I'm not going to say I'm that person. I highly respect that. I think that is very inspirational. But, you know, from a guy that doesn't push himself out of his comfort zone enough, I have been pushed and it has been worth it. So just know that uh, pushing yourself time sometimes leads to the best memories. So, well, I love that. And I think you got to say yes to what you love. I think that's what you and I have in common is we almost never turn down a chance to be on a microphone, whether that's a right. podcast or hosting a charity event or, or something. If you need us to get on stage and DJ a, a wedding or a funeral or whatever it happens to be, like we have done all of those things just because we really enjoy it so much. So I appreciate you coming on the show, Jesse. Great to catch up and have fun and, and talk about some of your most playful moments. So until next time, uh, if you can't be good, be good at it. That's what I always say. Go to playfulhumans.com. Join our playful community of adults uh, trying to rediscover the power of fun. And don't forget to subscribe to this podcast on iTunes, Google Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you're listening. And, uh, you know, have some fun. 
get out there. If you're uh, fully vaccinated and juiced up and the, the nanobots have taken you over and given you a boost of energy, go out there and play. Don't wait for tomorrow. Live for today. Keep on chasing the sun.